Proudly presents the What's in Your Head podcast. Digitized live from the Act Computer Studios in Cape Coral, Florida, it's the What's in Your Head podcast with your hosts Gordon and Don Abernathy. What's up, what's up, what's up, OG5? First and foremost, let me apologize to you guys following along at home for that extended white splash screen. I was actually playing a little comedy bit in the background, not realizing that when just a splash screen is up, no audio transmit. So the reason why the What's In Your Head podcast splash screen was there for so long is we thought we were enjoying a comedy bit with you, the crowd. Um, If you want to listen to that bit, you just have to download the podcast via your podcast app. But Gordon, how are you doing tonight, friend? I'm doing all right. I... All things considering, I am doing all right. Getting good grades. Your future's so bright. You got to wear shades. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Something like that. I see you guys on YouTube tuning in. I see you tuning in on Facebook. I got to figure out which one I want to tune in on so that I can uh, participate with the conversation with those you guys. I think uh, our Facebook channel gets the most play, so I'm going to zip on over there real quick. Oh, what a crazy week, and it's only Monday. <laughs> now, is that crazy week as in the going-ons in the world or locally at your Everything, home? just everything. Craziness at my house, craziness going on in the world. We got people launching missiles at each other. We got bridges closed down. We got pipelines reopening. Do you have gas? That's the big question. Yeah, I have gas and flatulence both. Um, I was going to say this a little later for the show because that's when we usually do the TikTok lesson of the week. But since we're on the topic now, um, I guess first let me put out the disclaimer that I have no proof, evidence, or claims that this is even true. But it's funny nonetheless. Hopefully it's true because if it's true, well, that's just awesome because I could think of no better group of assholes to happen to than the hackers that cause all the problems. So let's just go ahead and get this out of the way right now. And now for the What's In Your Head podcast TikTok lesson of the week. Hey, so this is a funny story. You know how there's a gas shortage on the East Coast? That's because a group called the Dark Side hacked into the Colonial Pipeline in Texas and used ransomware to take control of their systems. Then they demanded $5 million to give them access back to their systems. Now, once they got the money, the hacker group, the dark side, has just been hacked. And all of that money has been stolen, which was in cryptocurrency and additional Bitcoin that they had. So I didn't, I just found that a few months ago, so I didn't have time to research it. But how great would that be if that actually did happen? (coughs) That would be fantastic. One of the things I was wondering, and I kind of kicked around with some people I work with, is how does that shut down their whole systems? Because a lot of pump systems and a lot of subsystems are, are not even really connected to a network so much. You know, what part, what systems did it actually take down? Because everything runs on MCCs, motor control units. Sometimes it can be programmed. It's just input, output only. But uh, what part of the system, I'd like to know, got taken down? You know, it's interesting. I, I saw another TikTok where a gentleman used to do that type of work, and he was questioning the same things. And obviously, I don't have the answer. But I do can provide you maybe a little bit of insight. Um, I don't think that it took down the computers per se um how these things work is it's a worm right and so it actually populates because i i've dealt with this in real life uh, for example if you download it on your computer and you're one of those people who backs up your data to an external hard drive every night or if you have flash drives plugged in um, anything that your computer has access to to save data on it will encrypt so if you have an external hard drive it'll encrypt that if you have uh mapped drives to a server to a common folder where you share data with other users um the data in that folder on the server will get encrypted and so they got this malware it started encrypting data they're saying it took it offline but i think what happened is because the computer had it they took everything offline to keep it from propagating through the entire company's network and so when they had to take care basically take their network down and ensure they clean this thing up and this is purely based off of what I know as far as dealing with it in real life. I don't know what happened in their environment. Just from my my knowledge of dealing with this thing personally, 
chances are as a precautionary as they discovered computers on the network because i've seen it where it you know i've seen it at businesses where it's only affected one computer and the share folder in which that computer had access to it didn't have time to populate through the entire network and so they probably shut everything down to prevent the population the sad yeah. thing is, is if you're following along they paid the ransom they paid the five million dollars and now according to uh, cnbc Hacker group uh, DarkSide, which is behind the Colonial Pipeline, attacks claims that it has three new victims. This was as of Wednesday. And I guess what the other thing they do in the cases of these big co corporations is not only do they have your data encrypted and your computers are down, but then they threaten to publicly post it on their dark web pages as a further extortion. Which so I, I, I do hear something. I was looking up the dark side thing that you're looking into. Mysterious Robin Hood hackers are donating stolen money. So ha hacking group is donating stolen money to charity and what it's seen as a mysterious first for cybercrime that's puzzling as experts. So the dark side hackers claim to extort extorted millions of dollars from companies. But now it says it wants to make a world a better place. I think they're backpedaling. Um, mm -hmm. I think as we kind of talked on the OG5 podcast a little bit and a little bit on this podcast, um, Russians and Russian government aren't above putting people in gulags. They kind of enjoy it. <laughs> and I'm sure to save face, even though I'm sure there's a little bit, there's some palms getting greased and some pockets and uh, banks getting filled in uh, cooperation with this, it would not put, I would not put it past their government to take a couple of these assholes, turn them into martyrs, throw them in a gulag, say, look, we're not behind this. We're for stopping this just to blow some smoke and gaslight some people. And it would, and no one over there would lose sleep at right. night. And so these cats are probably a little scared that there's a possibility that someone may throw them underneath the train well, and yeah, send them off and, to the gulag and, 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 just so they can um, make themselves look better amongst the public. I don't think it survived the gulag. Uh, and a post on the dark web, the gang posted the gang or dark side posted receipts of ten thousand dollar in bitcoin donations to two charities one of them is children's international which is, says it will not be keeping the money uh the move is being we don't want your dirty money troubling development both morally and legally yeah they're going to add a little hey you really want to fuck with the world we're going to steal all this money from big companies and then we're going to donate a little bit to charity just to get people confused how mm -hmm. should they feel about this money yeah right how should they feel about us are we Robin Hood? No. I can see a little bit of that, but, you know, it's interesting. Who knows the true intent behind everything? Yeah. But uh, I'm not a fan of hackers. No. Remember the quaint days when we all used to fantasize of a world where we could physically assault spammers? <laughs> When that was our big, our big outcry, our big annoyance was the fact that there's people sending hundreds of thousands of spam to our inbox every day. Not even spam with viruses, just the fact that we were so overpopulated and our inboxes were so inundated with spam that it would take us hours and hours. And we'd have fantasies about finding the owner of the spam companies and having metric tons of junk mail sent to their homes and all this nice, quaint stuff back in the day. But, it seems a little trite now, doesn't yeah. it? Speaking of trite, um, I wound up on the happy side of, um, let's just call what I like to call the low expectation having ass TikTok last night. Did you get your butt handed to you by a no, bunch of... No, I, I, I had a few people try to. People um, try to settle your ways of thinking. Yeah, just to give credit where credit's due. The original, for those of you not familiar with how TikTok works, uh, people put out videos and you have options. You can do edit where it does a split screen and you can interact with their video or you can do a stitch where you uh, select a few seconds of the original video and then you add your your content to the end of it. And I have a few videos on my channel where I'm complaining about service and fast food and timers and drive throughs and the reason um, why... Those of you who feel like you're going to outsmart the system when you pull into a drive through and you see the line wrapped around the building out into the street, like, I'm going to park in a parking lot because there's no one inside, and I'm going to go inside and order, and I'll be out before this guy here in the red car makes it around the corner. And as you're standing inside waiting to put in your order, you're watching the guy in the red car as he's going around, and you're thinking, okay, I'm on the clock. As long as I get out before he gets to the other side of the drive through I've saved time and thus saved money. And then you find yourself milling about in the dining room for 30 minutes, even though there's two of you in there. 
and you watch the guy in red car zip on down the road laughing his, his happy ass off. And the reason Check for this that... Out. This this motherfucker thinks he's going to get I saw by. you walking in there. I see you eyeballing yeah. me. Yeah, we, we, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to get him. He, and then, he thinks he's going to beat this drive through And so once you stand in there for 20 minutes, you get indignant, and you're wondering, why does the drive through get priority? I'll dare you. Well, the answer is, sir, there's no facial recognition software. There's no way to time how long someone's standing in the dining room. And to be fair to the fast food restaurants, because of limited size in their parking lot and the potential for creating a traffic jam out on the main thoroughfare, they kind of have to give drive through the priority. Absolutely. However, they do have to clear that order off usually when it's sent, and they're not going to really want to have to clear it off ahead of time unless they really got their shit together. And so the reason why it seems like the drive through is getting priority when it is, um, depending on where you're at, you can usually cast your eyes over to the drive through window, and you'll see a, a clock. It used to be a big clock. Now it's more of a mm -hmm. computer screen with a bunch of, but somewhere in that computer screen, there is a clock and it's a average. It has a countdown timer and then an average overall average. And Gordon and I know this well, cause well, we both worked in fast food and what this is, this is the service time timer. And back in the day at Wendy's, it used to be, um, light operated kind of like uh, a laser in the light day. back in the day. And so you could actually, how some people would cheat back then because how it worked is when the car pulled up kind of like the eye in front of the urinal when you're standing there and you walk away it flushes magically well that's the way wendy's used to have their service timer and so what some employees or some managers would figure out is once the car left if you take the dinner tray that we used to serve the dinner in the dining room on cover that light, that eyeball up for a second move the tray it'll start it'll stop you do that five or six time it seems like you got cars through quick, it lowers the average, and you're within the corporate recommended service time. Now, the question I have, mm -hmm. being a guy who probably thinks too deep about this stuff and don't really theorize on top of the surface, is at what point does corporate say, we need to audit the store? Hey, one of the audits, I want to compare the screen time for the order versus the drive through um, customer service time because it actually will may say that there's more customers who've now gone through said drive through because somebody's waving a goddamn tree across there. Well, and I think that's why smarter managers would yell at that person for doing that. And, and the short answer back then, which I don't know if they still do, I haven't heard anybody doing this job since the mid-2000s. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I haven't heard anybody do this job since the mid-2000, which is the mystery shopper. Oh, the mystery shopper. You should be a mystery shopper. I don't know if How they still have that. for that gig? I know Bald Brian on Adam Carolla show used to be a mystery shopper for Jack and the Crack. Um, but anyhow, so nowadays I think it's more of a, there's a weight or some sort of scale. There's a more high-tech way of doing it. And so this is why whenever you pull up to a drive-thru, even if there's no one behind you, they ask you to please pull over and park because they don't want you sitting on the timer, thus letting corporate or the franchise owners know that they got horrible service times. And so this guy posted this TikTok, and I'll just play it for you here real quick. All right. So I just got my food, paid for my food. How much you want back? I'm going to pull up here to the window, and they're going to say, could you please pull into one of our spots for your food to cool down? Betcha. Betcha. Ready? Pulls up. Hello, can I have you pull into reserve two, please? Told you. Yep. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks. Now I see this video and being me and being the fact I've already done multiple videos on this topic. Here's a continuation. Yeah, this is a one of them well repeated stories on the show. Yes, and this is a well repeated, which tends to get quite a few likes. And so once again, yeah. if you don't have big tits, a blonde ass, and you don't want to stand in front of your camera with your bikini bottom crawling up your camel toe and having your lips hang out, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a current video on TikTok. And you're a forty year old dude like me, you gotta relate you have to do relatable content. <laughs> And so I stitched his video. But if you're 20, you'd be watching the other stuff. Your mic is super hot. I keep adjusting. Every, like every time you talk, you're pegging the needle into the red. I don't know if you need to turn the mic down on your side. I'll just back off of the mic. There, there you go. go. You're good right now. Okay. And so uh, let me just minimize this because I'm going to have to read some of the comments after I play this because I really angered the snowflakes on this one. And it's really something Aww. quite funny. But here we go. Here's my stitch. Hello. Can I have you pull into reserve two, please? Told you. Ah, yep. uh, yes, the classic drive-through service timer. 
See, that's how their location is judged by corporate, based on their service time, how quickly they get people in and out of the drive-thru. So when you pull up, you trigger the start time. They ask you to pull up to the uh, spot, you trigger the stop time, makes your average lower, corporate thinks they have better service time. That's why, my friend, if there's no cars behind you, and you're not going to prevent someone else from getting their food. Now let me pause this real quick, because Gordon and I have had this conversation multiple times off the air, and Gordon has done the same thing as well. So I'm not the only asshole in this basket. Because maybe their order smaller than yours? If there's no one behind you, just... Now see, I'm not an asshole, ladies and gentlemen. I just set up the caveat. If, there, if there's no one behind you, I'll rewind. And you're not going to prevent someone else from getting their food? Because maybe their order smaller than yours? If there's no one behind you, just decline. Just sit there. Let that timer go through the ceiling. Last time I was at Wendy's, I actually sat at their window and ate one of my junior bacon cheeseburgers. I told the person up the door and said, is that good? I said, no, oh, you're, you're good. I'm just not participating in your service time scam. Yeah, Next time you do door. that. Mm-hmm. Next time you do that. When he says it's good enough, pick up your soda or drink. Take a nice... <laughs> Can I get a refill? <laughs> pool, look at him say, everything's fine. Can I get a refill? <laughs> trying to present the uh, illusion that they're faster at service than they truly are. And so I posted that last night. Mm-hmm. And as I'm going to bed, I check TikTok and the, the views are going up, the likes are going up, and the comments are going up. That's by this sweet. by this morning, this this video had four thousand views. And it, by but here's the comments: um, Why? It doesn't hurt you to be nice. Okay, I put a like next to that, and then it had some replies on there. Um, it's not nice to lie. So someone's standing up for me, and then so these two start having a little debate, which that's always the best thing you want for a video is something that causes other people to argue, where you don't have to engage. Generate two guys dashing it out. So here, probably some orders take longer to make than others. Yes, but in my video, I explained that it happens even when there's no one behind you. So, the TikTok. And that being said, these companies they know how long it takes to make each meal, and there's an allowance in there. Oh, and they spend lots of money on research and development to figure out what an accurate, obtainable. But anyhow, they (laughs) allegedly spent thirty million dollars just to shrink the size of a chicken sandwich. So, Uh, Firehawk one seventy eight says, "I thought everybody knew this. I have more things to worry about than a franchise's perceived service time." Uh, Gary Williams, number five, said dot, dot, dot. Of all things to take a stand on, dot, dot, dot. Is this it? I think that's a new version of uh, this is the hill you want to die on, which that's not bad. Um, he wants you to take possibly a stand on this stuff guy, that we see in the news. This guy was, took my side. Let's see. Um, here's the guy who said, um, I never had a restaurant have me pull up if there wasn't anybody behind me, to which I reply, this happens all the time. Wendy's and Steak and Shake are the biggest offenders. <laughs> Well, if you're going to the only restaurant, it's like a Dairy Queen and there's nobody else around. It's like uh, 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 there's a sign in the parking lot for uh, Greyhound. You're not going to have that problem. Maybe you have experience with this, Gordon. Mr. Derek Decker 82 said, when I lived in Vegas, the Del Taco used to ask us to back up and wait until they called us. Then we would Never. pull forward when it was ready to re-trigger Absolutely this. Absolutely not. Actually, the Del Tacos have been historically some of the smoothest running ones out here this guy so now these are the, the supporting ones are all new this morning it was all i'm talking about how horrible person and this guy said they jump in the cars and would circle the drive through when it was slow um let's see question not really but also okay um see you know they still blah 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 i'm trying to find the funny ones where the people are just digging at me first uh first come first serve man if they want serve the per- person behind me they can walk around okay Tell me, okay, here we go. Tell me you're a Chad without telling me you're a Chad. Look at the cool guy. Do, look at this cool guy try to do something smart. Um, one guy called me a white bearded bitch. That's what I'm really looking for. Um, let me get on the very bottom because they think they post these in orders. Um, you suck. No illusions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Fuck the small guy. Stick it to the big. Stick it to him for the big man. No. Fuck the corp. The fuck the corp. Uh, yeah. Joe eighty four. What a little baby. How's that spit taste? Um, <laughs> giant, uh, let's see, giant silent gamer. This screams, quote, hey, let's get a crew fired for no reason. They're not going to fire the crew. If anything, they're going to bust the manager's balls. Uh, let's see here. Dee, 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 dee. Most places do this, but who cares? They want to put in an extra effort to walk it out. Mike, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're definitely not going to fire the crew if they can't get enough people to fucking work. That's what we got. That is what we're dealing yeah, with. Yeah, for those really workers. Be there. 
Yeah, but those workers get yelled at by their managers. You're just making minimum wage workers' life harder. By the way, I'm working on a YouTube video where I go around the minimum wage restaurants and I'm finding out that they don't pay minimum wage. Minimum wage in Florida right now is eight twenty five, and I'm finding most of these places pay between ten and twelve dollars an hour. But that's another topic for another time. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, there's uh, what an entitled pole smoker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think that he uh, he was saying something that, well, a certain community would jump all over right there. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is Beavis420, who has absolutely no content. I don't know. He has three videos. But he's Beavis. Um, I would much rather pull forward than get half of my fries in a sloppy burger. Oh, I'm sorry, half done fries in a sloppy burger. Brah, why would you want to hurt their metrics? Like, what do you do again? <laughs> Here we go. That's a good one. The hero that America needs fucking up minimum wage employees day. Uh, same guy here. How is this a scam? And why do you do that? You're like a new breed of Karen sitting and running their numbers because you're an asshole. <laughs> I just have a minute. I, I don't care if I sit at the window, but don't make it a habitual thing. You know, it sounds like a waste of everyone's if it's habitual, time. That means your store's not running properly. You just fucked those people in the store. Corporate's just going to fire them and not being fast enough. Again, they're not going to find people to work those jobs. <laughs> what right kind of grown-ass child man are you? Even if this is a, quote, scam, is true, how is it the fall of the corporation breathes down the necks of five men in order times? <laughs> now, the question is, is these people that's making those type of comments, do they work in that industry or do they have an idea of how the people that work in that industry feel? A service time scam? What scam are they do, pulling on you? You're an actual child. <laughs> but yeah, to answer your question, I thought the same thing too. And I'm looking at these profiles and most of them don't have any content. A few yeah. of them do have pictures and they look like in their 20s. And I got the thing, well, these probably are fast food workers. And the realization hit me that 50% of the population is on unemployment. So chances are no, they're probably not. Maybe these are those uh, those protesters over the last summer who has nothing to do right now. And that's they're just thrown out. Boyoink words. says, quick. hold on, Boyoink says, what does it matter? You're just being an inconvenience. I'm sorry, you're just being an inconvenience. Plus, don't fuck with the people who handle your food. So the fact of the matter is I'm helping generate revenue, which helps pay these people. I am an inconvenience. Yeah, so dude, employees you are... Sense. You don't understand how life works. So employees are literally being berated to, for their terrible system, and you're making their life worse. Or, just hear me out, you can be a good dude so they don't spit in your food and just move up. How about have a smile? I totally complimented compliment on that. Hey man, and if I see him hustling, mm-hmm. totally. Hey, you're going places in this world. Keep that kind of work up. One guy tells him I need a hobby. Well, this is my hobby, mofo. <laughs> hmm Yeah, and that's hey, how you get uh, snot have you ever in your been coke. backed up since we're talking about drive thru. Yep. Um, have you ever been backed up in a drive thru and I hit a point where you want to hit the ejector button but you can't get out? Yeah. Um, then you look and you're like, I'm in a truck. Can I make it over that? And then what kind of problems will ensue after this? Well, some of them, like if it's a small drive through, they'll actually have a concrete, it's a single lane and there's f- f- flower bed. So you're fucking, you're, you're committed. But, do, do, do. but have you ever committed that? Um, I have not. It's a little I, messed up out here. I was driving in through a weird parking lot the other day where it had two long two long what looked like two long roads but turned out one of them was the entrance for the bank and the other one was the road and i was on the wrong side so i just drove over the medium and the curb in my tundra um but anyhow short story short answer to why this bothers me is as i said gordon and i both worked in the industry we realized this is not an unattainable task as we said the service time is set there for a reason um, it's a way to in, in, uh, into, incentivize the employee to get the food out on time and hot ish because while well, their food's never hot on uh, the fact that these companies have been selling the same merchandise for 30 years, the merchandise is getting more expensive. The quality is getting lesser because they have to lower the quality of the food to lower the price to, so they can raise their margins so they can play employees, higher rage, the wages that they're demanding. Um, the fact that Wendy's no longer puts food in foil wrappers when it's to go to keep the food warm before you get home. 
Yes, they actually used to do that. If it was for here, it'd go into wax paper. If it was to go, it'd well, they're go all foil paper. Pop conspiracy theorist head now. Um, Wendy's used Nothing? to. Nothing. No, <laughs> Wendy's used to toast their buns. The guy yes. in the front window would toast buns when there was no one coming through. Nug and I went to Wendy's the other day. We got four ginger bacon cheeseburgers. Every one of them were ice cold. I'm sure the hamburger was hot at some point, but by, because of the fact the buns are were in a refrigerator, they had nice cold, crisp lettuce and tomatoes. Long story short, the reason that bothers me is because if the managers actually gave a shit, the employees would give a shit, they would try to meet that service time, and the mediocre food you're paying a high rate for would be a little less mediocre, and your french fries and food might actually be hot instead of being the mediocre crap that we get but i just thought it was well, funny it, that well and that's just it they need to incentivize you and like hey man we're going to have a contest today mm -hmm. whichever crew slams it has the least amount of returns mm -hmm. you know throwaways best and service mess up orders best service time i'm going to buy you guys uh some pizza or something just something small the end of the night let's let's slay this and, and and just kind of build a little bit of internal competition with those, those kind of jobs actually make that job a lot more fun mm -hmm. makes your shift go by quicker it makes and, your shit hum and as two former employees of the first or second busiest wendy's in the entire state of ohio um we know and if you're working at a high volume store and you're hitting those service times and you're getting more people through, thus making more money, and this is consistent, you will start getting high volume store wages because there's more people coming through, the margins are higher, the money's higher, the money's consistent, and if the money's consistent because the service times are continuously hit, then they can guarantee that consistent income, then they can give you guys more than five cent raises every 60 to 90 days. Exactly, have you ever worked at McDonald's? No. You think that was high volume at Wendy's? Oh my God. Imagine being back here in your high school. Hey, 10 buses just pulled on the lot. <laughs> well, see, Wendy's. But that was back when they, they put all the burgers in the warmer. And I tell you what, I will take the taste of a burger that's been the warmer in the warmer from two to five minutes over the shit they're pumping out uh, right now. Because it gets warm, it gets gooey, everything was all coagulated together. I don't know if all Wendy's do this. But remember, our Wendy's had two grills. You had a grill uh -huh. for the dining room, and we had a grill for the drive-through. And the better grill person, i.e., me, would always get put on the drive-through grill during a busy time. And um, but no, it's just kind of going back to what we were talking about a few weeks ago. the The, the quality of food has gone down. Um, one, they're living off of the reputations they have built for themselves in the past. But two, they're trying to pay people the money in which they're demanding but trying to do it in a way they don't have to sell a mediocre cheeseburger for $15 a piece. And I'll meet you halfway in the middle on the restaurants that have a screen that shows what you've ordered. Okay. I can read it, but if it doesn't have the screen, you should really be reading that back. Reading it back. Shit. They don't even give you your total until you get to the nope, window. Man. now. Around the way. Are you taking a shit or something? I'm going to hear a toilet flush. Is your computer slow that it's not giving you the to Oh, that's right, because you're ordering. Well, no, you only have oh, two drive through windows here. talking to Bobby right now about what's going to go uh, on tonight. So it's just, it's just funny that, that something that simple turned into this big battle about how I'm trying to stick to the little man and sticking up for big corporations and all that. Just trying to find legitimacy and how everything's operating COVID update Let's COVID do right. update do, 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 do. I was at Publix tonight buying hamburgers because well I wanted to make some hamburgers at home tonight so I can control the service time and the quality and I was walking through uh -huh. Publix I saw three employees walking through the aisle and I did a double take and I said oh shit you're not wearing mask congratulations <laughs> they no I I stopped wearing my mask all the time because they didn't care but now um, because of Florida it's it's Publix has voluntary mask mandates for their employees and like three quarters mm -hmm. weren't wearing masks. So that's a little bit of a glimpse, at least here in Florida, that things are getting back to normal that now when you go to your local Publix, the employees who are wearing a mask are doing it because they feel safer that way and not because of a company wide mandate based off of the wardrobe for the theater of whatever that word <laughs> I drew a blank on the wardrobe for the theater of fear. The wardrobe for theater of fear. Speaking of wardrobe yeah. theater of fear, so we've heard before that you can go get your vaccination, get a Krispy Kreme, get a free donut. I was going back up and say I went to the gym this weekend. I oh. didn't wear a mask. 
Nice. Walked up, sign said, CDC says if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Huh? Hmm. Okay. Arjun, for the longest time, said you must wear a mask until you get to your workout destination. But no one, no one ever wore them. But uh, so we know that you can get free donuts in some places. Um, some places are trying to team up and give people a lottery ticket. Um, we know some places are like doing movie passes. Are we talking about the what's probably most likely tax fire funded fund taxpayer bleh, funded? Uh, yes, the great state of Ohio said, "Hey, here's an idea. Let's take five million dollars in either tax revenue or COVID." The uh, emergency response money, and let's create a COVID lottery. Whoops, hey, boss, a- boss, boss, we got a pile of money over here. We got to spend. Well, I don't know what we're going to do with it. Ah, give it away. Well, let's just have some fun. Let's let's incentivize people to go out and get the vaccine, shall we? Ohio is giving away five million dollars in a full college scholarship for getting the COVID vaccine. Published Tuesday, May thirteenth. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine announces the new incentive to get young people vaccinated for COVID. So wait a minute. If you're 50, are you not eligible? Not to mention, why aren't they just selling them wings for free? Because that's a whole lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. The state will be awarding $1 million to vaccinated adults 18 and older each week for the next five weeks. The money will come from the state's federal coronavirus relief fund. I'm sure that's exactly what our, well, that probably is what they had. Well, in it mind. is better than giving away junk food, right? What's Let's that? Let's give you something. Well, a lot of places will get, hey, free donuts. Okay, now you're eating something that will contribute to the comorbidity that. Oh, some of them are still doing cause. Some of them are still doing that. Um, the money will come yeah. from blah, blah, blah. Quote, I know that some may say, DeWine, you're crazy. <laughs> The million-dollar drawing idea of yours is a waste of money, the governor said in a tweet. But truly, the real waste at this point in the pandemics, I'm sorry, because this is from a tweet, but truly, the real waste at this point in the pandemic, dash, when the vaccine is readily available to everyone who wants it, dash, is a life lost to COVID-19. Well, yeah, and think about it this way. It may look like a waste of money, but how much does one advertising campaign run, say, on a billboard or on TV? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Replace that one run, still run everywhere else, move that money over into this, and now this is also a news generating. It's free advertising. You're going to get some people who actually perk up and say, yeah, school's expensive. Why not? Yes, but see, they're only focusing on the $5 million they're giving away. Paragraph 4. The state's lottery system is conducting the raffle using the Ohio Secretary of State's publicly available voter registration database to pull candidates. I would have preferred them to uh, lead lead with that. (laughs) People can also sign up online to be part of the giveaway. Yes, but now it's no longer an election year. And so now we're using the state's lottery system to conduct a raffle, but using the Ohio Secretary of State's public publicly available voter registration database there are some it guys there's some people in the state who are getting paid a lot of money to put this this little ruse on so it's more than five million dollars at this point i'm sure it's going to be a couple hundreds of thousand dollars to put the logistics together to, to get this thing off the ground and running right oh, yeah absolutely for teens ages 12 to 17 because well you know we want to entice them too dewine said the state will hold a separate lottery that indoctrination system the state What's will that? randomly award a full four-year scholarship to the attend <laughs> i'm a dick okay i'm a dick you're, uh, you're, listen you old great what bitch. college do you think you're going to want a scholarship <laughs> to that's gray bearded bitch you gray bearded bitch which which college do you think you're going to get a free ride to uh, something that's probably a liberal arts type school. The Ohio State University? No. Maybe Columbus the, State? The state? No, they're not going that cheap. <laughs> the state's lottery system is conducting a raffle. Use, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, for teenagers 12 to 17, DeWine said the state has separate lottery plan. The state will randomly award a full four-year scholarship to the attend the state university in Ohio each Wednesday. So... Not Ohio State, but what's the other one? Um, yeah, the state. University of Ohio? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, sure you read that right? <laughs> to attend state university. Oh, state universities in Ohio. 
So I guess you get the pick. Yeah. <laughs> well, then they have they have Ohio State, but then they, there was a there was a lesser college, right? It wasn't Columbus State? Yeah, I think State. you need to get your bifocals back on. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps. Um, blah blah blah. Yeah, so that's how Ohio is just going to cl- clear out a quick five million dollars from their COVID response money database. Yeah, but I would like to see something like that compared to what else are they spending the money on? Yeah, this actually may be more worth more worthwhile and a better investment versus some of the true BS they're they're doing. You know. So I was watching the five on Fox News tonight. And the subject about the Palestine-Israel lobbying of rockets back and forth came up. And The Five's an interesting show. It's not exactly completely fair and balanced because Juan Williams is the only Democrat on the board of five people. Um, it would be nice if they could throw another Democrat up there, but I think one or two of them claim to be independent, so it's supposed to level the playing field. But they all basically bag on Juan, which I don't mind. He has it coming. But Juan Williams kind of, displayed a lot of the left's feeling on this. Uh-huh. Get ready to wrap your mind around this fucking fiasco of an argument. Israel is in the wrong because Israel has the dome, the, the dome of steel, they call it, the dome of iron. What's a rocket? The iron dome. The iron dome. And basically they're, they have these rocket interceptors that can shoot the, the missiles being lobbed out of Palestine. Have you seen the pictures of that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's insane. But here's the thing. Because, you know, they like to stand up for the little guy. Israel's in the wrong because since they have the technology to shoot the missiles down, according to Juan Williams and some of the Democrats, Israel should not be returning fire with the other rockets causing damage. Because Palestine doesn't have the same technology, and so it's not fair. So Israel is supposed to just continue to launch hundreds of thousand dollars with the interceptor rockets, blow the rockets out of the skies, and then stop. Hey, hey Timmy. <laughs> and then not retaliate. Hey, Timmy. Timmy, yeah. I, got, I got something for you. Okay. See that house, see that house over there? Mm-hmm. That house is owned by a man named Mr. Williams. Mm-hmm. Mr. Williams got a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So what's really cool is us not having much money. We're permitted to throw rocks through his window because he's got the the defenses. He's probably got a little screen back there. Mm-hmm. He's got unbreakable glass. Back. He's got enough money to uh, replace it. Mm-hmm. So we're allowed to do that. And so, so he, he used... Punched you in the nose. What would you do? He used the phrase David and Goliath, and Greg Gutfeld's like, except but for... But David threw the rock first. Because <laughs> Greg Gutfeld said. <laughs> Greg Gutfeld's like, but David's the one put, throwing the rocks. He's like, that would like be... There's a there's a guy, a big-ass dude, looks like an MMA guy. I think his name's Titus. He's on uh, the five every once in a while. He's like, that'd be like me walking in Titus's office and swinging and punching on him, but him not allowed to retaliate because I'm five foot two. He's six... Five, 220 pounds no at some point he's going to pick me up by my legs and shake me out but yeah so even though they didn't start this nonsense and because they had the technology and despite the fact that before lobbying rockets at targets they call said building and said hey in exactly one hour and 38 minutes we're going to pull a fucking rocket through your door so go ahead and evacuate the building Despite the fact that they're doing all these things, they're still in the wrong because they're supposed to use their technology, which isn't cheap, spend hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, blowing these rockets out of the sky, and then just stop. So you want us to use an older technology? Okay, we can just call up bombing raids like World War II. We could really level the playing field. So what you're saying is since some police municipalities have armored trucks and maybe riot shields that can stop a nine millimeter. They're just supposed to stand there and let it shoot at them and not do anything about it. Not retaliate. Yeah. It makes no sense. It's like, how does that, I don't know. That's truly a, the saying in the, I think it's in the Bible. He who lives in glass houses shall not throw stones. They quite literally are in a glass house on the Gaza. No, it's called, Hey, Israel has, it's called, Hey, your anti-Semitism showing. Yeah, but then, unfortunately, it's the uh, Israelis and the Jews over there that's getting labeled as the racist, which is weird as F to think about after World War II. Not to mention there's Muslims who want a better life, who's living in Israel in peace with the Jews who are being protected by the same system. 
And now I know I know they're breaking on cultural lines more than anything, but it's weird that they're saying that the minority, being Jews, is being the bully to the majority, which is Islam, because that is the largest religion in the world. Mm-hmm. But AOC and the Five have oh, a couple yeah. Muslims yeah. on their team, and so, and what's concerning is I've had family members come to me saying, "What side are we supposed to be on here?" And I'm like, side that makes Israel sense. side. I'm like, but what about the Palestinians? I'm like, okay. They're saying Israel took their land. It's like, okay, the easiest way I can explain this, because there's not a lot of time. Go this on. goes back thousands of years. Not only does it go back in thousands <laughs> of years, but most recently it goes back 85 years after World War II and all the Jews who were rounded up and put in concentration camps who couldn't go back to their homes in Europe because, believe it or not, after the war ended... The anti-Semitism didn't go away, so the assholes in their towns still didn't want them there, and so a lot so let's of let's put them in the Holy Land. <laughs> a lot of them didn't have anywhere to go, or when they no, went exactly. to the uh, internment camps and the concentration camps, the young kids before their mothers and fathers were killed in gas chambers, told them, "If you ever get out of here, go to the Holy Land." And there's a great documentary called "The Long Road Home." It's on Netflix, and it's about that. It's about after the war. The war didn't just end and everything was after the war. A lot of these guys and gals and survivors of these concentration camps spent another year basically living in another fenced-in camp. Anti-Semitism in the European countries. And they didn't, a lot of these cats didn't make their way to Israel until like 1952. Took some time. Six years, seven years later. But there's a very good documentary about how after the war, um, there's a lot of, some of them are Jewish, some of them are Anglos. They were um, World War II pilots and how they basically got hired, believe it or not, after the war. Um, you know, as we do, the military was auctioning off B-17s, B-47s, and some of the, um, you know, Mustangs and these different planes. And so these Jewish uh, populations were fundraising money. And these World War II pilots who were bored in civilian life looking for something to do, they got set up and basically became de facto members of the first Israeli Air Force by going to these auctions, buying these planes. Um, the fact that they actually made a fake airline, flew to Cuba, was supposed to be doing commercial flights for Cuba, snuck off in the middle of the night, went to Russia, bought a couple of planes from Russia, took the wings off, put them in the back of these C-47s, and flew them to Israel and put together the first Air Force to help protect them from the shit that's been going on ever since. and But if you want an insight of why they all ended up in Israel, how Israel came to be, how the UN facilitated all that, it's a good place to start. In reality, wasn't it somebody's land before either of them? Yeah. It's changed hands. But it wasn't taken as part of a hostile takeover. It no. was split up after World War II, and it was the UN said, okay, we need a place for these cats to go. They want to go back here, so let's do this. And it's been a battle ever since. I mean, you've taken a look at the maps, right? Yeah. That is crazy chopped up. That's yeah. a whole weird area over there. Yep, and there's like even Palestine gets a, a piece going through it, so they have access to, to so they have a ocean-based port. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's so funny. And we used to hear this a lot when I lived in California in the early 2000s. It's like, oh, you know, the reason Mexico's so hard with your economics is because california land was taken away from them and california has the biggest ports in the it's like first off dick mexico has the same amount of coastline on the same ocean as california hey those cities weren't quite like that when that happened <laughs> even if we all were to walk out and say here's california and all of its infrastructure it would go to shit within three years so it has nothing to do with the coastline and the ports it has everything to do with the poor management and the government so don't claim it's because, oh, well, you guys took California to coastlines. Mexico has the same coastlines further down the damn coast. And, Mexico and probably even more. So Mexico's saying they've never taken any land from anybody else. Well, I don't say Mexican. I'm saying people who, you know, the, the people have the ideologies. Now, there's the thing about Mexico. It's, it belongs to, quote, unquote, Mexico. So yeah. yeah, but there's a group of people out there who feel that other people can't stand up and speak for themselves, and so they have to do it by proxy. You know, rich white middle house, middle aged housewives. Yeah, but that's the thing that that it, it doesn't happen. Every group has 
got some other group under mm-hmm. them for the most part, you know. And it it's sad, but it's just a tribal nature of who we are. Hopefully, we'll get past it some point in time. But but it's just so insane how brainwashed people are on the topic to the fact that now on TikTok, you got Generation X gays going at it with Generation Z gays because generation there's photos of Generation Z gays who are holding posters saying queers for Palestine. And so, so the Generation X gays have to do TikToks where they're showing articles in the background about how Palestinians drag homosexuals down the streets and kill them and Muslims throw them off a roost and have to explain to the Gen Z gayers that if they were in Palestine, they wouldn't be able to be openly gay. <laughs> Because now, now take that and put that in a form of a South Park episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. One hundred percent. I can see it yep. happening. <laughs> like the guy, the old. Well, he's he would be a boomer because he's a Vietnam vet. But like, if you had like a golf war equivalent, where the guy with the one arm, he would be like the the Generation X gay and versus. The, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. And it's like, hello, how are you going to say you're queer for pal? That's Bebop. Once in my lap. You want up here? Is there a group called Queer for Palestine? What's that? Is there a group called... You, you just about to say something. I, I tried to fill it in, but what were you talking yeah, about? Yeah, here, I'll see if I can find a photo real quick. What's doing. the group called? It's just photos. You can you can you you have screen sharing now, right? Yeah. Okay, you can try sharing it, but just Google um, Queers, uh, Queers, uh, Queers for Palestine. There's photos all over TikTok people are screenshotting. Queers for... You know, I have to say thanks to... Well, what happened to that group if they actually went over there? Well, that's the whole... That's what the Generation X queers were telling them. Hey, stupid. Yeah, right here. Uh, here's a picture. Did you Google it? I'm like seeing it's all over the place. Just type in queers for Palestine and hit image. Like here's um, four white kids holding up their Black Lives Matter fist as queers for Palestine. Here's another guy, queer for Pal- queer for queers for free Palestine. And by the way, thanks to uh, Queer Eye for the straight guy for allowing straight guys for us to say the word queer 28 times without, you know, feeling bad about it. You see the pictures now. I was thinking about this today. I actually didn't look into it because I was at work, but I'm like, I gotta hope people are not that unaware. Oh, are you yeah. seeing the pictures now? <laughs> hey guys. I need you to really take a look at history. Yeah. And that's what the older queers are doing. And they're saying, hey, Stoop, uh, you're on the wrong side of this. You know not what, a, <laughs> what you speak. You know yeah, you're not on what the, you speak. You're on the wrong uh-uh. side of this. You're you're, you're, you're coming off dumb. And it, and can't, that, wait, wait, what's this? Can't pink wash this. What is pink wash? I got to look that up now. They're, it, that's, they're going I against themselves. It's there, it, and you and I were talking about this last week with uh, the clip of Bill Maher and the clip of the cat from The Daily Show, where they're kind of they're kind of turning on their own now because their own's getting so extreme that they okay they can't stand by it anymore. Okay, this 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 is gonna make your head explode. I just wikied it. Mm-hmm. Pink pink washing LGBT. Yeah, pink washing is a term used to describe the action of using gay-related issues in positive ways in order to distract attention from the negative actions by an organization, country, or government in context to LGBT rights. It is used to describe the variety of marketing and political strategies aimed at promoting products, country, people, or entities through the appeal of to gay friendliness in order to be perceived as progressive, modern, and tolerant. This phrase in reference to LGBT rights was coined by Sarah Shulman in an op-ed piece for the New York Times entitled Israel is Pink Washing. (laughs) The term often gets confused with pink washing in relation to breast cancer. Well, yeah, I mean... I thought, uh, you, I thought it was when you. I thought it was campaign. Blah blah blah. I thought it was yeah. when you didn't separate your whites from your colors when you did the laundry, but I guess I was wrong. This is a little segment we're going to lighten things up before we get into the news. Uh, this little segment I want to refer to the thought process of a drunk. So I found myself in a situation this weekend where I was listening to two drunks have a conversation, and both drunks were from out of town. And uh, somehow we got on the uh, subject of tolls and paying tolls. And the drunk from out of town apparently rides motorcycles up and down the coast. 
And he's got himself a leeway pass and a Jersey easy pass. And he was so, explaining uh, to us. He's drunk A, the out-of-town guy, right? I'm yeah. Mike. Well, and drunk B was out-of-town, but it was a chick. And drunk A was talking to drunk B that he has to, depending on which town he is in, has to wrap up the transponder from the other town in tinfoil so that when he goes through the tolls, he doesn't get double billed. I think there would just be one national toll. And one she year. was like, that doesn't make sense. And he's like, it makes absolute sense because you don't want to get double billed. And listening to the drunk logic going in circles for two minutes, I finally had to pipe up, say, well, if both transponders work in both toll booths, why not cancel one transponder and just have one? <laughs> you don't understand, man, because that'd be like, you know, billing one to an Amazon <coughs> uh, 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 Visa card and bill one to your American Express. I did one more lap and I stopped because he wasn't. I said, but once again, if your concern is you have to wrap up one transponder in tin foil so it doesn't get Double activated deal. when you're going through the place. Mm -hmm. So when you're in Jersey, you're afraid your leeway pass is going to get dinged. Why not just use one at both locations? Well, do they share that way across the board? I do don't think they do. And I, I know... Here in Lee County, our Lee Pass works. Or with he the was sun drinking pass. with another guy. He said, "You know what you need to do with that." I don't know. You got to wrap that in foil when you go. Uh, you would think guy, right? he totally sandbagged the guy, and that's what he's doing to this day. Maybe what he was trying to say was that they will bill, but you, but the leeway doesn't have the ability to transfer the balance to the easy pass up, and maybe that's what he was trying to get to, right. but wasn't the way he was explaining it. You ready to do some news? Let's do on this incredibly depressing version of the What's Your Head podcast. But hey, we can't ignore all the news all the time, especially when what the hell's been going on. It's just been crazy. By the way, um, for you OG5 members, if you don't know, head into your Patreon app. We did an episode of the OG5 podcast this Saturday. So there is a new version up. And um, for those of you watching on YouTube, um, Mr. Mark, I did e uh, mail out your stickers yesterday. And if anybody else is watching and you want free stickers, send us a self-addressed envelope to the Digital 410 address that's located under the address link on d-410.com. I don't have my PO box memorized. I don't have it in front of me. I guess I can pull it up right now, but what's the fun in that? And while you go to d-410.com to get that address, please click on the Patreon link so you too can become a patron and uh, help support the show. I put up a video on TikTok and a, a short on YouTube. I was out kayaking this weekend. I did four miles one day and two miles the previous day. And the, ca and the canal that leads down to the end of my street right now is inundated with lily pads. And I've been... Seeing a lot of frogs? Well, no. More importantly, fish. And I've been... I don't have a fishing rod. And you say, well, fishing poles are pretty cheap. Yeah, they are. Then you got to buy lures, and then you got to drop thirty-eight dollars on a fishing license. So it, it quickly, you know, if you're going to do it, you need to you need to go in there with the idea of dropping a hundred bucks, right? Uh, you, I think for everything, you might should be looking more to three to five. Yeah, depending on the expense of the rod you want to buy. Right. But I might go El Cheapo route. You know, I'm I'm the type of person I don't invest heavily in something until I've I've gotten to the point where I know I'm going to continue to do it. No, um, no, I get it. Kind of like course, when right. um, I acquired the kayak, I asked um, James if I could borrow it for a month or two so I can use it one or two two or three times and make sure it fits me, make sure it's something I have a inclination of doing before I drop the money on it and then have it sit in my backyard for three years like I sat in his. And so I think before I go out and drop $100 on a fishing pole, I might go the El Cheapo route. But anyhow, I asked, I put a little a little um, satellite questionnaire up on TikTok and YouTube for the fishermen. Hey, do you think there's any bass in here? Uh, with all these lily pads, is this just snag city? Am I just looking to lose some lures? And everybody's telling me to use some uh, topwater frogs. So I might uh, maybe this weekend go out and get me a cheap fishing pole. Interestingly enough, I'm going to do this. I have a series on TikTok, um, Rules of Life for uh, Young Adults. And this is going to be one of them, which is don't loan your neighbors or relatives anything because <laughs> you'll never get the shit back. Interestingly enough, about five, six years ago, Carrie and I loaned her sister three fishing poles and we never got them back. 
But if you want to get rid of something, maybe you can loan that to them. That's not that easy because about four months ago, I had a family member ask me if I still needed that treadmill in my garage. And I said, tell you what, I'll let you have it. But it was used to belong to my stepmother, so I want first right to refusal. When you get tired of it, want to give it away. That way, if I want it back. And they agreed. And five months later, it's still sitting in my garage. I keep sending them texts. Hey, you still want this treadmill? Because I don't run on it. I run outside, and none of the other families do. And I want the thing out of my garage. But So when you don't want to lose something permanently, somebody wants to borrow it and never give it back. When you do want to offload something and you offer it up for free and someone's interested, they never come get it. Yep. Even when you offer to bring it over in your own truck. So not only can you have it, but I'm willing to deliver it. And it's still hey, sitting in my speaking of trucks, let's move on into the news. Okay. Why, well, you got truck story? Joining us now from the Digital 410 West News Desk in Las Vegas, Nevada, Gordon Abernathy. So the whole point of that is continue, uh, go subscribe to our YouTube channel for some potential fishing videos in the future. Go ahead. I'll make a short story long. Oh, <clears throat> so... You ever been to auto auctions? You know anything about auto auctions? I know that when I was married to my ex-wife, her father was never around. And then when we got our first apartment and he found out about it, he would make the three-hour drive up from Kentucky with a pocket full of cash to go over to the Grove, uh, the was it the Franklin County or the Ohio Auto Auction down there at the end of 665 and Stringtown Road? Yeah. He would go over there with an ass load of cash buy up cars, park them in the parking lot of my apartment complex, <laughs> list them in oh, the newspaper. That guy. Oh, it's worse. <laughs> list them in the newspaper under my phone number. Then he would drive one of them back to Kentucky to sell. Then my ex-wife, who was my wife at the time, who had no job, would sit there and answer the phone all day, sell his cars for him out of the newspaper, so that when I got home from working all day building ambulances, my phone was ringing nonstop by people wanting to come look at used cars. She would basically do all the heavy lifting for him, and then at the end of the week when there was one car left, drive it down there to him, give him all his money, he would give her a small little commission, and then drive her back up. And this went on for months until I put my foot down. Because it was insane to turn my okay. one-bedroom well, apartment to... Story. to Use Car Central. I did not mean to. Uh, <laughs> so, but other than that, that I don't know. Subject in a other time. than that, I don't know the first thing about uh, <laughs> car auctions. So check this out. There is a uh, Las Vegas man that is um, suing FedEx. And what they're suing FedEx over is, uh, let me get into the story. They're basically overused uh, delivery trucks with replaced odometers. <laughs> That's fucking fantastic. Not, <laughs> not to be a dick. That sounds like a U-Haul or a Ryder move, not a FedEx move. And I, well, and I don't know if it's really FedEx or their middleman. It may be a probably middle the middleman. Middle allegations in a lawsuit, in a lawsuit, Law in a lawsuit filed by a Las Vegas man that one of the biggest delivery companies in America is reselling its trucks without disclosing the true mileage on some of the vehicles, which is raising a lot of questions. So this is a matter, you know. We live, people get deliveries all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So we see these trucks. Well, these, these delivery trucks have to go somewhere. They're, they're, their life ends at mm -hmm. some point in time. So these trucks are converted. They're used in a lot of different ways. Some of the driving your streets in your neighborhood. But what brought us here today is um, this guy's this probably one of these. Dealer. I was going to say, he's probably one of these guys who's trying to start his own Amazon no. delivery. No, it's not even that. So Tom Layton says he's a. a, a commercial truck dealer okay so he basically he's based on him so he goes and he gets these trucks at auction and then sells them over the last several years i've noticed some of the commercial trucks have been going through my dealership with issues with the odometers he said he made the uh, discovery in march 2017 when he sold a freightliner delivery truck to a fedex contractor funny full circle from fedex back to a fedex contractor in the washington state area um But what he's noticing is about a month after the sale, the FedEx contractor contacted him and said, hey, what are you trying to pull here? You know, he's like, well, you know, what's going on? What's wrong? Uh, he said that I took this, I took this, in, uh, he, he said what was going on. He took it in the freight liner, had the vehicle hooked up to the computer. computer. No, is it actually had over 400,000 
miles on the computer's odometer and the odometer only read 180,000. Mm -hmm. So what's basically going on is these trucks are getting replaced uh, odometers. Uh, they're saying they're broke, but the, the government requires you to roll that odometer to what it currently is or put a there's a decal you have to put on on the inside of the door saying you know where it was at when it was replaced so long story short if you're buying a commercial vehicle and you notice that that glass above the speedometer looks a little too shiny for 140,000 miles and there's no dead flies or dust in there because i doubt they're rolling them back they're probably no, buying whole that. new replacements they it'll be a year of a truck that's supposed to have a analog odometer and it has a digital uh-huh so you've got that going on too. Um, yeah. So I think it's the middleman company that's doing it. At least that's what FedEx is saying. And I, I kind of, without knowing the full situation or any of the situation for that matter, <laughs> tend to believe it. But, I would uh, tend to believe it too because regardless of how... Never trust the middleman. Well, not only that, but regardless, it's kind of like kind of like the whole theory about when people say the government doing this and doing that. It's like, how do you expect 100, 500, 1,000 people to keep their mouth shut? I don't care how scrupulous person you are. If you were a mechanic who was being paid by FedEx to pull this job off, even if you have the best intentions of keeping your mouth shut, a few beers and a couple of joints into you on a weekend, people ask you what you do, pff, you'll never believe this, man. I get paid forty five grand a year by FedEx to put bootleg odometers in the van. This would come out a long time ago, but if you're a small, you know, two two dickheads who are doing this. It's well, easier. That'd be an import export Steve move. That would definitely be an import export Steve move. But yeah, I mean, if you're working for FedEx, uh, oh. there's no way the, the guys doing that would keep a lid on it. He would have to be in cahoots with off the truck Tony. Oh, absolutely. But 100%. yeah. So uh, Lake South Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is a beautiful place. Uh, believe it or not, I've never been there, and it's yeah. in my own state. But uh, I've seen a lot of pictures. Anyway, scuba divers on Friday completed the first dive of a massive six-month-long effort to rid the popular Lake Tahoe of fishing rods, tires, aluminum cans, beer bottles, and Cell other phones. trash ship bags tend to throw in water. Mm -hmm. The team is between five and ten divers. They plan to look for trash along the entire 72-mile shoreline Dig it out in an effort that could be the largest cleanup in Lake Tahoe's history. They plan to dive three days a week down to 25 feet. Uh, they, they are expecting this cleanup to cost about 250k, and that's just the shoreline. Just Dude. imagine, take that that distance from the shore and out to 25 feet, and just keep multiplying it across the lake and there's just a lot of trash there. you know every once in a while you'll see like some hillbilly take like a fishing like a dock and put an outboard motor on it and turn it into like a homemade pontoon boat that's hillbilly heaven right there if i had something like that and the desire to do it just the four miles worth of canals that i kayak in i could probably pull out 200 pounds of tires and trash i'm like i'm going through the whole time i'm seeing like it pull inflatables. I'm seeing tires all the time. I know right now where there's a rear differential sitting on the bank. I know where there's a, the frame of a stolen bike sitting right now. And there's just, once I started kayaking, I can see how easily a surfer, a hiker, someone who's outdoors all the time, I can see how they turn into diehard fucking environmentalist. Cause 100%. just me, just me out there kayaking three or four times a month. And the amount of shit I see, the tires, the buckets, the trash cans, the baskets, the um, pool deck chairs, all the shit just floating in the four to five miles of canals that I've paddled so far is just disgusting. Yeah, You know, even in Big Sky, living up there in the summers, I'd hike under the lift lines the first summer and find just, I'm talking cans from the 70s, pop top PBR Miller Lite cans. There's a guy on TikTok who works at a ski resort, and he's posting videos now. Every day after close, he's going underneath the lift. He's finding cell phones, lift tickets of like lifts that they like different parks. He's finding money and all kinds of shit underneath them. Oh yeah, I bet he's finding a lot of stuff. All right, so this is coming out of Florida. You may have already heard this one, but uh, some idiot decides to fill four to, uh, containers of gas in his Hummer, and it then caught fire. Did you hear about this at all? No. A Hummer of Florida burst into flames right after the driver oh, filled yeah, 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 yeah. containers with gas. Citrus County, Florida Rescue said they responded to the call at the Texaco Food Mart in Hamosa, Florida. 
for a vehicle that was on fire. Four, gal- four five-gallon containers filled with gasoline was in the back of the vehicle mm-hmm. when it caught fire, according to officials. One person was injured but refused to be treated. Bet he's the driver. I uh, bet he's the guy who lit the cigarette in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah. The cause of the fire is un- under investigation. Gas fumes and cigarettes. I told you not to smoke while I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, thousands have been running to gas stations uh, after the Colonial Pipeline caused a shutdown and panic buying. But uh, yeah, so there's some jackass. And do you buy that one video that's out there where that lady is filling up plastic bags with fuel? I've seen photos of trunks with plastic ba- trash bags. But the, the thing that I don't buy that is Doesn't fuel. The fuel melt that Yes, bag. that's what I was going to say. I think a lot of it's photoshopped or even tea put in there to give the illusion. Because, yes, you can put gas in a solo cup and it'll eat that plastic within minutes. A thin trash bag would not, would not hold up very long. It definitely wouldn't hold up to the weight. So, yeah, I'm not buying that. But mm-hmm. it's luckily the panic buying down here, we were only out of gas for a day and a half which is still a day and a half too long. There's four gas stations within a mile of my house right now, and all four of them are out of gas completely. What is the price in, um, in Florida right now? Regular is like 289 which isn't bad, but the premium is like up to two, uh, three something. Yeah, I think I paid 325 at Sam's, which is 10 to 20 cents lower than the regular gas. But uh, that's all I have for uh, for the news today. I was looking for the price of gas oil. This concludes the evening news, and now back to the ACT Computer Studio in Cape Coral, Florida. Thank you, Gordon. Right now, the price of regular gas in Florida is $2.89, and the mid-grade is three twenty-three. Uh doesn't say what premium is. In Hawaii, pre- uh, mid-grade is $4.05. So, yep. That is where we're at. But, hey, that is going to wrap it up for this episode of the What's in Your Head podcast, a very depressing episode. But we want to thank everybody for continuing to support the podcast and continuing to download. And thanks to the new subscribers on YouTube, our YouTube channel has gained probably about 15 to 20 new subscribers in the last few weeks. So thank you to you guys. And uh, we will talk to you on Monday. And like I said before, if you're an OG5 member, make sure you head on over to the um, Patreon, log in your Patreon and listen to the new episode of the OG5 podcast. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>